What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be episode number 44, a special one from the WPT meetup game at the win. As you can see, this is going to be a long one. This was a 13 hour session. Unfortunately, I've been feeling like crap during the whole making of this video. So I'm going to try to keep the energy high for you guys. So many huge names in the poker room on Thursday. Check it out. We got some photos. I couldn't believe they all were asking me for photos. All the big names, Doyle Brunson, Joey Ingram, Brad and Andrew, of course, Phil Hellmuth. They all are viewers of the channel. I was shocked. Just kidding, guys. All right, enough playing. Let's get to the hands. There's already way too many to go over. I had to cut out probably 45 minutes worth. This would have been a ridiculously long vlog, but I tried to highlight all the, the best ones for you guys as usual. So let's get into it and we will chat at the end of the video. Hope you enjoy it. All right, I grabbed the Max 1500 and head to a table that I'm told Doyle Brunson will be joining when he arrives. So here we go, let's get started. Our first interesting hand, I am in the big blind with 8-9 offsuit. Another gun opens for 15, small blind calls, I make the call. We're going three ways to a flop, 6-7-10 rainbow. We flop the nuts in the big blind. We both check to the aggressor and he bets 15. Small blind calls, I decide to put in a raise to $60. We're not slow playing. The original razor folds and the small blind makes the call. Heads up to a blank deuce of diamonds on the turn. When he checks it to me, I bet $80. Looking to target top pair. He called 60 on the flop, so hopefully we can string him along. And he does. Makes the call for 80 bucks. River is not great. It's the Jack of Diamonds. It completes a backdoor flush draw. But when he checks to me, we still got to bet for some value here. If we get raised, we can evaluate what to do then. So I make it $150, and he does make the laydown. Said he had pocket eights. So always nice to drag a pot right off the bat. Next, we look down at Queen Jack offsuit in the hijack. We have a straddle on from under the gun. It's his very first hand. He just table changed from another table. So it looks like he's ready to get involved in some action. So when action folds to me, I make it $30 to play. And we only get a call from the straddler. So we go heads up to a flop, 9-10 Jack with a couple of spades. So pretty good flop, top pair, open ender. He checks it over to me. I bet $30, and he quickly puts in a good size raise to $125. Looks like a capable player, so of course, right away we think about all the hands he could be doing this with. Spade draws, two pair sets. King Queen would be a disaster, um, but we can't fold top pair open ender, so I make the call, and we get a great turn card, the Eight of Hearts. All right, so we turn the second best hand possible, Queen High Straight. The spades miss, and he slows down, checks it over to me. So I think we have a clear bet now. Uh, like we said on the flop, he could be check raising with a lot of some smaller straights, two pairs, flush draws. So I size it up and bet $200. Looking to get value from those type of hands, maybe deny equity from the spades. So I make it 200 to go, and he decides that is not enough. He wants to play for a lot more. He looks at his cards again and puts out a massive raise to $750. Does he really have king queen right now? I guess best case scenario, I'm up against a hand like queen x of spades. So we're chopping, but maybe he has like a free roll. Worst case scenario, we're up against king queen. So neither of those situations are great for me. So I should just be making the call here potentially even letting this hand go. In the moment, I told myself, ah, we're probably just chopping most of the time here. It's his first hand, he doesn't have king queen. So I just go ahead and stick all the money in, which is pretty bad actually, because he either has king queen or queen high spades, right? So um, I think the better play would have been to just call and then see a river. Maybe we can get away from it if a spade hits, but that's not what I do. I put all the money in and he makes the call. And of course he has king queen. So we're drawing dead to a chop which is a very bad situation to be in. And the river is a blank, seven of hearts. So I would have paid it off anyway on the river, but hate the way I played that on the turn. Um, so yeah, we're gonna lose a massive one there. And that's the first time I've gotten stacked for 300 big blinds in a very long time. So we start off good, then we lose a massive one. It's time to put the work boots on. Next, we look down at two jacks from under the gun plus one. The $10 under the gun straddles on. So I open for $35 to play. Next player wants to play for a lot more. He tosses out $135, which is pretty strong since I'm raising from early position. So as you can see, this game's gonna be playing uh, much bigger than normal. So action folds back around to me. With pocket jacks out of position, I'd rather four bet than just call here since not a lot of flops are gonna be great for us. I'd rather take control. So that's what I do. I make it $350 to play and he says call. 
And the way he did this, I felt like he was trapping with a much better hand. I don't know why, I just got the sense of that. So here we go, heads up to a flop that brings king 10 nine. Just a pretty bad flop. It's gonna be all over his four bet calling range with like ace king. I think we might've already been behind, but for some reason, my instincts told me to just check this one and be done with it. Normally I'd be betting like 100% of the time here, small. You know, I could just bet like 150, 175 on the flop. But I check, he bets 300 and I fold. So pretty damn weak for me. So quickly stuck $2,000. I think it's time to take a walk, regroup, come back and start fresh. So that's what I do. All right, so we took a little break, feeling good. Now we're ready to play good. Not much going for about a half hour until we pick up pocket aces from the big blind. Uh, under the gun plus one makes it 15 to play. Hijack makes the call. Definitely sticking in a good size raise here out of position. So I take it up to $70 to play. Original Razor calls and the hijack folds. So we're going heads up to a flop, 8, 8, 10 with a couple of diamonds. Pretty good flop. We have the ace of diamonds as well. So I take the lead and bet 65 and he quickly lets this one go. So nice to just drag a pot after those last few hands. Next, we look down at ace five suited from the cutoff. The $10 under the gun straddles on. Player on my right limps for 10. I take it up to $40 to play. Action folds around to the small blind who makes the call, and then the limper makes the call as well. So we're going three ways to a flop. That comes ace, eight, eight. So we have aces and eights, no kicker. Action checks around to me, I bet $50. We see a fold from the small blind and a call from the player on my right. Heads up to a king on the turn, which is a great card because if he had me out kicked with the ace, we're just chopping now. So when he checks to me, I check this one back because we're either chopping or he has an eight, right? So I check and the river is a blank seven. Now he wants to fire out $150. I figure we're probably chopping most of the time, just like earlier. So I make the call and we see the bad news that he limped in with ace king. So we had a very hidden top two pair there and we got second best again. Here's a quick shot of the room as Phil Ivy walks in and joins the table to our right. So here's the deal, when an ambassador joins your table, if you get all in against them, whether you win or lose, you get your name in a raffle drawing for a seat in the main event, the $10,000 buy-in, so it's pretty cool. So we're still waiting on Doyle. Next, we look down at king-queen offsuit from under the gun and open for $20. Action folds all the way around to the big blind who defends, he makes the call for 20, and we're going heads up to a flop that brings king six deuce. So top pair with a queen kicker, pretty good flop. He checks to me, I bet 25 and he makes the call. Turn is a blank, 10 of hearts. He checks to me again, so I size it up a little bit, betting $60, hoping to get value from the worst kings. Charge the flush draws, so I bet 60, but he wants to play for more. Here comes the check raise to $160. So of course he can have the sets of sixes and deuces, um, king 10 even, so I go ahead and show him this one. Gonna make a discipline lay down here. Just let this one go. We've been having second best all day. And my man Jesse is nice enough to show me pocket tens for a turn set. So even though we got two out of there on the turn, it's nice to make a good lay down and uh, get some momentum, positive momentum going forward. Next, we look down at 10-7 offsuit from my $10 button straddle. Under the gun plus one misclicks, tosses out $15, which is going to be enough for just a min raise to 20. So I go ahead and call the 10 more. Small blind and big blind both call. So we're going four ways to a flop that brings 10, nine, deuce, rainbow. So we flop top pair, backdoor straight draw. First two players check and the original razor fires, 50 bucks. We're not going anywhere with top pair. I make the call and the small blind makes the call as well. Three ways to a nice card on the turn, the seven of hearts. We pick up two pair, small blind checks. The original razor comes out firing still with a bet of 150. I debate if I want to raise right now, but decide that he's too good of a player. He's probably not going to call with an overpair. Um, and honestly, we can still be behind here against Jack-8, pocket-9. So with the way things have been going today, um, having second best a lot, I decide to just make the call here. And the small blind com comes along as well for 150. So three ways to a pretty nice blank on the river. The five of hearts, small blind checks, and the original razor is not done betting. He fires out 360 on the river. At this point, I'm just going to be happy if we're good. I make the call. Small blind folds, and we are good. He shows ace 10 for top pair, top kicker. So we get super lucky there, not only to bink the seven on the turn, but to even play the hand in the first place because he misclicked preflop. Had he made his $40 open, 
I probably just let 10-7 go, but we win a massive pot there, about an $800 profit with 10-7 offsuit against the guy who stacked us early on. So let's get going on the comeback, baby. Shortly after that hand, here comes Doyle joining our table. He gets a standing ovation, a round of applause. What a legend. Pretty cool that he gets to uh, jump on our table first. So players are going to be ready to get involved with him, trying to get one of those raffle tickets. All right, so the first interesting hand with Doyle here. I have ace-jack offsuit from the cutoff. Action folds all the way around to me, and I open for $20. Doyle calls from the small blind, and the big blind defends as well. So we're going three ways to a very nice flop. Jack high. Jack four five with two clubs. Surprisingly, Doyle leads right out for $75, and the big blind calls. Guys, almost every vlog this happens, the lead into the Razor is almost always pretty weak. Even if it's from Doyle Brunson here, what can he be leading out with, right? He's probably never going to lead with a set. So it's either a worse jack or a draw. So I definitely want to put in a raise right here to get value from the worst jacks and deny from the draws. So that's what I do. I take it up to $220 to play. Doyle folds instantly. And then actions on the big blind. Who decides... 220 is not enough. He rips it all in for about $1,000 total. Seriously, again, with second best today? Jeez, what's going on? So top pair, top kicker. We also have the jack of clubs, so we can't put him on like king jack of clubs. Um, he can have like king queen of clubs, six, seven of clubs. In both of those cases, we're almost a slight underdog. And then worst case scenario, he has pocket fives, pocket fours. And we're just completely dominated. So after a little bit of thinking here, I find what I think is the right play. Let this one go. Ask him if he wants to show for the vlog. And he does grab one card and it's a five. So looks like maybe he had like four or five suited. Maybe pocket fives right there. So I think we made uh, a good lay down there and uh, got rid of second best again. Doyle heads off to another table after about 45 minutes, and our next ambassador is Steve Aoki, who joins the table, and he is all in immediately. I think it was his first or second hand. Opponent's thinking over here. Eventually, lays it down, and Aoki does show 7-8 for a runner-runner full house. Next, we look down at a beauty from our under-the-gun straddle. Pocket queens, Steve Aoki limps from early position, the hijack raises to $40, and the big blind calls. So I'm definitely going to stick in a good size raise here. Uh, typically out of the big blind, I usually 4x at plus the dead money. So that's what I do. I take it up to $210 to play. Aoki gets out of the way, and the hijack only has about 525 to start the hand. So I figured he'd just be letting this one go or shipping it all in, but surprisingly he decides on a flat call, leaving himself about 325 or so behind. So he makes the call and the big blind gets out of the way. We're going heads up to a very nice flop, 975 with a couple of hearts. So we dodge the obvious dangerous overcards, aces and kings. So I make a down bet of $150 and my opponent quickly announces all in. So we obviously make the call. Let's see what he has. We are up against ace jack of hearts. So a pretty fair fight. We got the queen of hearts. Nice blocker. We're a slight favorite. 55% to win this one. But our soul is crushed. No waiting. When the ace of spades hits. Ace of clubs on the river for overkill. And we lose another big pot. Just as we had some momentum going. There goes about 700 or so back down the drain. After last pot and this one. So back to battle. Next, we look down at a pair of fours from the hijack. Uh, the $10 under the gun straddles on. Action folds around to me and I raise to 30 bucks. Steve Aoki calls from the button and the straddler defends. So we're going three ways to a flop that brings queen, nine, four, all diamonds. So we flop a set, but there's three diamonds on the board. Action checks to me, still good enough for a bet here. So I keep it small with a bet of $40. Steve Aoki calls on the button and the straddler gets out of the way. So we're going heads up to the worst turn card, the King of Diamonds. So we got four diamonds on board. It also completes the straight. So I'm pretty much done betting this hand. I check, he checks it back. River is a deuce of clubs. I could probably put out a small value bet, but I decide to just check. He checks it back as well and we win. I think he showed like queen eight or something like that. So we take down a little pot. <laughs> Next, we look down at ace-queen offsuit from the small blind. The $10 under the gun straddle is on this time, so when action folds around to me, I take it up to $40 to play. And the big blind wants to play for more. He quickly tosses out a 3-bet to $110 to go. Straddler gets out of the way and action's back on me. 
Normally I'd be four betting here out of position with ace queen offsuit since it doesn't really play well after the flop, but I've been getting wrecked today, but I'm not in any mood to fold since we're stuck a ton. So I just make the call. We go heads up to a flop that brings king, queen, eight. So pretty good flop. Uh, second pair, top kicker. I check and he quickly checks this one. Turn brings another king. So it feels like we're probably good right here. We have kings and queens with an ace. I check to him and he checks it back. River is a 10 of spades. Now I feel like we can probably bet for some value. We might be up against hands like pocket jacks, pocket nines. So I bet 75 bucks and here comes the raise to $250. I think my man was getting sneaky here all along. So I go ahead and let this one go. And he did. He shows us quad kings. So we are just running into it today. After that one, we did a bomb pot as if there wasn't enough action, and I definitely bluffed off 300. So we are in this game for 4,900, but now we look down at pocket kings. It's time for a comeback. I am in the low jack. We have the $10 button straddle on. Action folds to me, and I take it up to $35 to play. The next player calls the one who just had pocket kings. The straddler calls as well, and the small blind. So we're going four ways to a flop that brings king 10-4 with a couple of hearts. Finally, we got a monster in a multi-way pot. Small blind checks to me, and I'm going to want to make a pretty good sized bet here with straight and flush draws on the board. So I make it $90, and surprisingly, we get a call from the next two players. So looks like we need to dodge some hearts and some straight cards. The small blind gets out of the way, so we're going three ways to a nine of diamonds on the turn. It's not really the greatest card, one that we didn't want to see as it completes the obvious straight with queen jack, which could easily be in one of my next two opponents range there. But um, I think it's our hand's still way too strong to check here. We don't want to give any free flush draws or straight draws. So I bet $225 here on the turn. And honestly, guys, at this point in this session, I'm just not folding. They're going to have to show me queen jack here. Even if either player rips it all in for a thousand more, I'm going to I'm going to put the money in. So, I make it 225 and the next player announces call. The button gets out of the way. So, here we go. Heads up to a river that is the money card. Let's go. The 10 of hearts completes the flush and pairs the board. So, we only lose two quad 10s. I'm going to go ahead and rip it all in here. He has a little over 400 remaining and he quickly makes the call and guess what? He did have queen jack, so we got lucky there on the river to pair the board. Finally, a massive pot comes our way. The tables might be turning. Next, we look down at king 10 offsuit from the small blind. The $10 under the gun straddles on. We see a limp from the hijack. I make the call, big blind calls, and the straddler checks the option. So we're going four ways to a flop that brings ace, king, king. So we flop trip kings in an unraised pot here. I go ahead and check this one, and unfortunately, action checks all the way through. Turn is an awesome card. The 10 of diamonds, we fill up right on the turn here, but we're not expecting much action. So I go to bet $15 and the big blind actually tosses out 15 at the exact same time. So it looks like he was eager to make a bet there. So he just announces call. The straddler gets out of the way and the hijack makes the call as well. So three ways to a blank deuce on the river. We have what is essentially the nuts. Nobody has ace king or pocket aces in an unraised straddle pot, right? So I'm going to let the eager big blind bet because he wanted to on the turn. So I check it to him. He bets 30. Hijack calls 30. Now I stick out a big raise to $150 looking to get value from queen jack or another 10 out there, of course. And to my surprise, the big blind re-raises. He ships it all in for 270 and action is on the hijack who has a decision himself, which I can't believe because he just called 15 on the turn and 30 on the river. So wondering what he has, he gets a count and it's about 270. He makes the call. So now we have a clear re-raise situation. I don't think I'm going to get any more action from the hijack, but I have to stick in a raise. So I make it 600 on the river and he snap calls. So we have a massive pot. What do these guys have? The big blind has king deuce for a rivered full house. The hijack had queen jack for a turn straight. So what a miracle, not only turn card, but river card to get me more action. Also the fact that the big blind tried to bet out of turn on that turn card um, allowed me to check that river. I think we still make the same amount of money. It's just a unfortunate river card for him um, to want to stick in the rest of the money there with King Deuce. And then the hijack just got caught in the middle. So we pick up like a $900 profit there on a pot that escalated out of nowhere. 
So here we go, baby. Next, I straddle from under the gun and look down at 7-8 offsuit. Action folds to the hijack who opens for 35. I'll be defending here. I make the call for 25 more. We go heads up to a flop that brings 4-5-6. Look out, Rob Stacks is on a heater. I check it to him and he makes a continuation bet of $30. Don't expect this flop to hit my opponent very often here, so I have a clear just call. Don't want to scare him off. We want him to catch up if possible. So we go to a turn card that is great, the Ace of Spades. Hopefully this hits him. I check it to him and he checks this one back, but it looks like he's trying to be sneaky. So when the river brings a Queen of Spades, it does complete the flush. Normally I'd lead out, but I had the sense that he uh, hit that turn card. So I check to him again and he does make a bet $50. I'm not really worried about the flush since I think he hit that ace on the turn, so I have a pretty clear check raise. I make it 165, and he snap calls with ace queen, so we get a nice run out there for him to hit top two pair, and uh, we make some extra money there on the river with the check raise. Next, we look down at ace eight suited from under the gun plus one. I open for $20, and we only get a call from the big blind. So we go heads up to a flop that brings 10-7 deuce. So we got nothing but ace high and some backdoor draws. But when he checks to me, I bet $25 and he makes the call. Turn brings a jack of clubs. So we have a little equity with a gut shot straight draw now. He checks it over to me. I could just play this passively, give up here, take the free card. Or I could decide to put pressure on with what he probably has, which is either a 7 or a 10. So I decide to do that and size up a little bit and go 75 on the turn, just like I would with like ace jack or king jack. He eventually does find a call on the turn for $75. So here we go, river, we're looking for some help, but we don't get it. It's a six of spades and he checks it to me. Ace high is not gonna be good here ever, so we can just give it up, cut our losses or go for it. I think we have a decent spot to go for it here with what we think he probably has is a pair of 10s, so that's what I do. I size up and go 250 on the river, just like I would with ace jack or better, looking for a light call. And it looks like we have him in a very tough spot as he goes into the tank for quite a while, but eventually finds the hero call with 9 10 of clubs. So he actually turned a straight flush draw, had a monster, but picks us off nicely there on the river with a good call. Nice hand, sir. We take a break and go to the WPT meet and greet, have some champagne, get some pictures with Phil Helmuth, chat it up with Andrew and Brad, and uh, we come back almost to a brand new table. We still got the player on my right who's been with me all morning, and our first playable hand when we get back is pocket aces on the $10 button straddle dream situation. Um, we get a raise from the hijack who takes it up to $30. Player on my right, the cutoff goes to 90. I take it up to 260, and unfortunately, both players let it go. Next playable hand, what do you know? Pocket aces again. This time we're in the hijack. Action folds to the player on my right who raises to 15. This is like my sixth or seventh time three betting him. I think we're going to get action this time. I toss out $50 and he makes the call. We're going heads up to a flop that brings 889 rainbow. He checks it over to me. I decide to get sneaky and check this one back. Turn brings a five of diamonds and here comes my opponent with a large bet, $125. So he bets bigger than the pot. Polarizing size, heads up here. He either has all of it or a bluff. So we have a clear just call and the river brings a 10. He doesn't slow down. He bets 100 on the river. I could raise here, but not sure what I'm gonna get value from. Would hate to get re-raised on the river. So I just make the call and he shows pocket jack. So we still make probably the same amount of money had we been the aggressor on that one, but um, we pick up a nice pot with pocket aces. Next, we look down at another nice hand on our button straddle, ace queen offsuit. Action folds all the way around to the small blind who limps. The big blind limps as well. I use my option to make it $50 and we get a call from both opponents. So we're going three ways to a flop that brings eight, nine deuce. Both players check to me. I decide to just check and take the free card, which is a good choice because the turn brings a queen. So we flop, uh, we turn top pair. They both check to me again. So I size it up, bet $100. The small blind folds and the big blind makes the call. River brings a seven, it's not really a great card. We have some straights and two pair combos out there. So when he checks to me, I just check this one back and we are good up against queen 10. So we got him out kicked on that one and win a couple hundred dollars. 
Next, we have an interesting one here with pocket jacks in middle position. We see a raise to $20 from under the gun. Very next player makes it $80. I played with her before. She typically plays together with her husband at the Aria, and she seems very tight. So given the action, I think we have a clear just call here. A lot of times you're going to want a four bet with pocket jacks, but uh, given early aggression and early three betting, we can just call here. You can even make the case for folding this hand if we were much shorter, but um, I decided to just call and the under the gun player calls as well. So we're going three ways to the miracle flop, jack, six, seven, rainbow. Let's go. We got top set in position. First player checks it and she makes a small bet of $100, about a third of the pot. We have absolutely nothing to worry about on this board. Top set, rainbow flop, neither player should have a straight draw. So I just make the call and the under the gun player calls as well. So not sure where he's at since we have all the jacks, but he comes along as well. And we go to a turn that brings the deuce of spades, total blank. We have a complete rainbow board and the nuts at the moment. First player checks and she continues firing with 225 on the turn this time. I think it's clear she has an overpair to bet flop and turn multi-way. She's gonna be pretty strong now. So there's probably merit to raising right here on the turn, but given the opponent who's very tight, I think I might push her off. So I decided to just flat here for the same reasons on the flop. We have nothing to worry about. I think that's our best chance to get more value on the river. So I make the call and the next player gets out of the way. So we go heads up to a king of clubs on the river, which isn't the best card since we don't know which overpair she had. I told myself if she fires massive, I'm just gonna have to make the call, hope we're good. But luckily she checks it to us, which is great news because I don't think she's gonna ever check a set of kings here on the river. She's gonna wanna get value from all my jacks that I might have. So she checks and how much, I don't know. Um, Given my opponent, she's on the tighter side. I feel like if I rip it in, it might scare her off and alarm bells might've already went off um, when I call on the turn on such a dry board with a player behind. So I end up deciding on a size of $400, hoping she can pay it off with pocket queens. I think aces, she probably snap calls, but she doesn't. She goes into the tank for quite a while, but does eventually find the call. So we show the set of jacks and we are obviously good. So we take down another massive pot profiting almost a thousand bucks on that one, getting us closer and closer to even. Next, we look down at another beauty ace-king offsuit from the hijack. Action folds to the player on my right who raises to $15. I'm gonna be three betting him again here, probably for the seventh or eighth time. I take it up to $45. Action folds back around to him and he makes the call. We're going heads up to a flop that brings ace, ace, four with two hearts. We have all of it. We got trip aces and the king of hearts. He checks it to me. I'm going to bet small here with most of my hands. So that's what I do with the monster. I bet $30 and he makes the call. Turns pretty much going to lock this one up with the ace of clubs. We turn quads. He checks to me again. I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to continue firing just like I would with any bluffs. I bet 75 and he makes the call. Here we go. The river brings a meaningless 10 of clubs. Well, meaningless for me anyway, since we have quads. He checks it over to us. I feel like he must have a pretty good sized pair to call flop and turn. So we're going to size up just like we would with our bluffs and bet $300 on the river. He knows what I'm capable of. He's picked me off a few times here. So I go $300. He eventually finds the call again, but this time we have the goods. Show the quads and take down another massive pot. Next, we look down at 6-8 suited from middle position. Action folds to the player on my right who raises to 15. I make the call. Button calls and the small blind wants to play for a lot more money. He puts in a three bet to $75. I'm probably gonna let this one go, but the player on my right decides to flat call. So I'm gonna jump in here in position. We're all super deep. So I make the call for 75 and the button gets out of the way. So we're going three ways to a flop that brings eight, five, three with one spade. So we have top pair and some backdoor stuff. First player checks and the next player checks. I feel like I'm getting set up for a check raise. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the free card and we get a deuce of clubs on the turn, picking up a gut shot now. So here comes the small blind. Now he wants to bet the turn for $155. Next player folds. No sense in raising now. Um, I'm just hoping our eight's either good or we can bink our straight on the river. So I just make the call 
And we do indeed continue with the heater. The four of hearts hits the river. We have such a hidden straight. I feel like he's got a bet with an ace on the river with a wheel, but he doesn't. He checks it to me. So I figure he probably just has an overpair. So I end up finding a size of $400 on the river. I feel like he's probably going to snap call with an ace, but he doesn't. He tanks for a little bit, but does find the call for 400. So we're going to win another massive pot there. And our stack is growing nicely. Next, we look down at pocket fives from the hijack. Action folds around to me and I make it $20 to go. We get calls from the button and the big blind. Three ways to if flop, four, five, six with a couple of hearts. We flop middle set, but it's a wet board. First player checks, I bet 30 and the button puts in a small raise to $70. Next player folds and I just make the call. Heads up to a queen of spades on the turn. I check and he checks this one back, which is good news. River is a blank 10 of diamonds. Everything misses. So I go ahead and take the lead with a bet of $125. He makes the call and we win. Next, we look down at another monster on our $10 button straddle, Ace King Offsuit. We see a raise from under the gun plus one makes it 35. Next player calls. I'm definitely three betting. I make it 105. Action folds back around to the original Razor who makes the call and the next player folds. So we got what we wanted, looking to get heads up. Heads up to a flop, queen, 10, six with two spades. So great flop. We have two overs and that key card, the ace of spades. So when she checks to me, I'm gonna continue betting this flop. I make it 125 and she makes the call but looks pretty hesitant. So here we go, off to a turn card that brings the eight of spades. So pretty good card since we can continue repping the nuts right now. She checks to me, so I decide to size it up here. Put pressure on all the queens she might have, maybe King Jack. So I go 325 on the turn, and she goes into the tank for a very long time. Not sure if she's acting or not, but she eventually finds a call. And uh, now I'm a little bit worried because she seems a little bit more on the conservative side. So the river is a total blank. I don't even know what it is, uh, but she checks it to me. I just decide to give this one up since she has less than a pot size bet left and has already put over $500 in the middle. I feel like she's probably going to call on this blank river card. So I give it up and she does have ace queen. So probably couldn't have gotten her off of that with given how much she put in the middle. But who knows? Maybe an all in does get the job done. But um, we're going to lose a big one there and move to the last hand of the night. All right, we look down at another monster, Pocket Kings from Under the Gun Plus One. First player opens for $15. I've been three betting him all night, but I've always had it. This time I three bet to 50. Action folds back around to him and he makes the call. So we're going heads up to a beautiful flop. King, queen, four with two clubs. We flop top set. He checks it to me. I continue with a good size bet here. We got some straight and flush draws out there. I make it $60 to go and he makes the call. Turn is a total blank, five of diamonds. He checks, I bet $135 and he calls. River is a three of diamonds. He checks, I size it up, go 315 and he lets this one go. Said he had a ton of outs. So probably sounds like ace 10 of clubs, maybe ace jack of clubs. So we hold on a big one there to end the night. Wow, what a session, guys. We were in for $4,900, unbelievable. Glad we added that third uh, bullet on. I don't really like to get deeper than that. So uh, in for 4,900, out for 4,400. Unbelievable comeback. I've never been so happy to lose $500. So we're gonna book this loser and uh, feels like a win. So we'll catch you at the end of the video. All right, guys, that's it for number 44. What a ridiculous session there, huh? Um, yeah, I haven't been that deep in a 2-5 in a very long time. Well, it wasn't really a 2-5. It was more of a 2-5-10, but still, still a lot of money to be in for. <sighs> so relieved that we got almost all of it back. I was actually like, uh, I think I got to like 4,700. I was really close, and then I lost a big one there. And then I was just out of steam, you know, I didn't eat all day. We were drinking mimosas and champagne. Uh, maybe I could have nickeled, my, nickeled and dimed my way back to 4,900, but I was like, you know what? Let's not get too greedy. Let's go by the way you feel. Take the loss. That's basically peanuts compared to how much you were down. So still glad we, you know, battled back. Felt good emotionally the whole time, even though things were going terrible at the beginning. Um, took a nice 
turn of events with those pocket kings when I revered the full house against that straight. That was the turning point. From there on out, we didn't lose many huge pots. So um, what a great time. Always good to see Andrew. It's been way too long. And Brad and then all the guys were nice enough to take photos and talk poker. And uh, yeah, it was good good stuff. I'm looking forward to more of these meetup games. And I met some people who view the channel as well. Nice to meet you guys. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Not sure where that's going to be. I'm not feeling great right now trying to get over this bug I have. And um, stay to the end for a cool trick shot. Appreciate you guys as always. Hopefully you made it through this long ass video. <laughs> this is my longest one ever. And I had to cut out so many hands. So so many little pots that were just like three bets and missing the flop. A lot of pocket pairs. That's what whittled down my stack a lot too throughout the course of the session in the first five hours. So, But I'm happy overall. So uh, yeah, leave some comments below guys on the hands you liked. Liked. Leave some comments on the hands that you like, the hands that you hated. I know there's a lot of both. I can take it. I can take the feedback and the criticism. That's how we get better. We talk it out. So uh, I appreciate it. Trick shot at the end. Check that one out. It's a new one. Best of luck at the tables. We'll see you next time.